Okay, so Rabbi Nachman's, uh, his teachings regarding, you know, his teachings regarding uh, music, they're very varied, you know, they're not, they're, they're multidimensional, they cover a lot of different ground, but we're going to start like from the simple and then we're going to go and work our way up because that's the way we have to build, right? So in Rabbi Nachman's shorter, less uh, complex lessons, which are collected in a book called Sichot Aran, um, he, he teaches that the nigun, a, a melody, is something that every Jew has to have with them. You know, everybody's got to have a melody that accompanies them. And you could be a musician, so you could be somebody who's immersed in music, or you could have music that you love to listen to. At the very least, we should have always what he says, a nigun in our mouth, uh, that we carry it with us all the time, because it's something that helps us in uh, focusing our mind and our attention and our hearts on God, on, on the consciousness of God. And this is something that we need to keep our mood, you know, to keep our hearts uh, lifted and to keep our hearts moving and to feel alive. That uh, the nigun is, is um, the melody, whatever the melody is, is something that has a great power for, um, for helping us in, our, in our, our soul work. Now, in terms of the, like, the actuality of music, so music has, um, uh, whatever form it takes, has certain, um, has certain uh, dynamics to it that for anybody who is a musician or has an ear for music, you know, there are certain dynamics within music that also they're not just physical things. They are, they are spiritual realities. All right, so let's go back. The dynamics of playing music, like I'm, I'm a musician. I love music. We understand that that which attracts us, like Philip Glass notwithstanding, um, unharmonic or, or dissonant music, you know, like postmodern dissonant music, uh, is like a kind of philosophical experiment, but generally speaking, the music that human beings enjoy, the music that we relate to, the music that speaks for us and that speaks to us, is music that is composed of various forms of harmonies, and even our like our chord structures, our melodic lines. They all are um, of this process, like Rabbi Nachman says in Torah in, in the lesson two hundred eighty two in Torah Zamra is this process of weaving together, making choices, right? Like I have, I was gonna take out my guitar, but let's say I have, you know, when I'm playing the guitar, so I'm making choices all along, like I'm playing several strings at the same time and I'm choosing the notes that I'm playing, right? I'm choosing on the fretboard, the notes that I'm playing and I'm using my other hand to activate those strings in order to be able to create this, this, this composite of sound. And this composite of sound has harmony to it because I'm making choices. And if I were to choose like the dissonant, like the, the, the tones that don't work well together, that clash with each other. In the meantime, let's go back. We'll go back to that image of like, I've got the guitar, right? I'm holding my instrument and, and I'm playing, I'm a lefty. So I'm, I'm playing my strings and I'm choosing my notes, right? And even when I'm not, even when I'm not choosing a note, like, the other string that I'm that I'm playing, an open string. If I'm playing an open string, that's also a note, right? So it's just that I have, you know, when I'm when I'm moving up and down the neck. So I've I, I'm I'm choosing, but I'm also making choices with my open strings. And all of these sounds are coming together and they make a harmony. And so Rabbi Nachman in lesson 282, in the great lesson um, Azamra, which means I will sing. So Rabbi Nachman speaks about the um, importance of learning how to make choices about what things, you know, what are we focusing on? And when we make uh, the choice to focus on the kudos tovos, think about those notes, you know, like even in a, sheet, in, a, in a piece of sheet music, that each one of them is a point, a kind of point, and it's a good point. Or you can think about like, you know, those notes that you're hitting, if you're making choices about how you're playing along the fretboard or how you're plucking the strings or whatever instrument you play, you could play a violin, you could play a guitar, you could play a piano play the drums also. So all of all of these instruments, they have their points that you choose, you make choices, and you choose to, to attach points to each other that are going to create a harmony as opposed to a dissonance. And Rabbi Nachman calls this being the var, the ruach tova from the ruach necha. He calls this uh, clarifying out the good spirit from out of the ruach necha. Now, the ruach necha is like this kind of means a kind of spirit of depression. 
or um, you know, kind of melancholic heaviness. And this ruach necha'a, which means it's it's debilitated, you know, it's it's um, it's debilitated, and the uh, and this debilitated spirit is like also in ourselves that we also have choices that we have to make about what we're focusing on in ourselves and in other people as well, in order to be able to draw ourselves out, to be mevara, the ruach tofa from the ruach necha, in order to create harmony where there would have been disharmony, in order to create beauty where there would have been um, um, a kind of heaviness or melancholy or despair. This is the choices that we're making like a musician. So I get to be the sole musician of my own life. You know, I might not play any instrument, but I'm playing the instrument myself. When I play the instrument, myself i'm like plucking this string as opposed to that string or this one in harmony with that one and when i and when i'm playing these notes i'm creating something because i'm making choices about what i choose to focus on and that rabbi nachman said in a very simple way like uh, you always have to have a nigun with you and that can mean your own music you make your own music or you listen to music or you have a nigun in your mouth you have a melody in your mouth this is something that um, Rabbi Nachman said, in terms of our service of God, in terms of our mental health, in terms of our uh, our wholeness, is something that we have to have music with us all the time. And then we spoke a little bit deeper about about the nature of music, about creating music, and like uh, like a musician, you don't have to be a musician to do this. You don't have to be, um, you know, you don't have to play any particular instrument because you play the instrument of yourself. And the instrument of the self is also all about the the being in a state of wholeness that I'm going to be able to see my good points and draw them forth, see the good points in other people, draw them forth, link them up together, create harmony where there might have been disharmony. This is all expressed in the actual dynamics of music. And in the actual dynamics of music, like I said, you know, uh, if I'm playing the guitar, so I have my, you know, I have my fingers working up and down the neck and I'm making choices about the notes that I'm playing. And I'm also making choices about the strings that I'm plucking. It's very complex. And in order for it to come out to be this whole that sounds beautiful, it's a constant process of making these choices, which even feel at a certain point, like when a musician is learning how to play. So the process of, lear of learning is also this process of having to become more and more innate, that it becomes more and more natural to make these choices. Like I become more and more familiar with my instrument. Where is the point that I, where are the points that I am um, activating? What are the points that I am activating through plucking that string, through hitting that note on the fretboard or keeping an open string, whatever it might be, that together it's creating harmony and beauty. This is something that uh, like a good musician, you, 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 you learn your basics, you get your tools together, and then you start to be able to incorporate this into your natural mode of play as you're doing what it is that you're doing. And it's, and it's something that, you know, you, you, it, it starts to become a part of your nature. So let's go on to Yad Nevi'im So in lesson, in lesson 54, it goes beyond a little bit this dynamic of choosing the good points, right? Creating harmony out of the place of disharmony. Uh, pulling out or drawing forth the, the, um, the, uh, the good spirit, the good sound out from that which is the occluded sound or the, or the depressed sound. So this is something that Rabbi Nachman speaks about in Azamra, this drawing together plucking and joining together the good points to create harmony so that I feel liberated to be able to sing to Hashem. I feel liberated to be the fullness of myself. I feel liberated to be able to serve God. The, all of these are, all of these are, um, are, are uh, powerful, powerful points that, again, like a good musician, you know, as I'm, as I get, it becomes more and more familiar, it becomes more and more natural to me so that hopefully, you know, what's the, what, what does a musician want to come to such a great uh, familiarity with my instrument, to be so at one in a certain sense with my instrument, that I'm going to be able to just make these choices almost unconsciously, that it's going to be so deeply ingrained in me where the Ruach Tova is, as opposed to the Ruach Necha'ah, where the, where the good sound is, where the good melody, where the good point is, that I'm going to weave together with another good point, another good point in order to make this beautiful sound, that that's something that I want to be ever more part of my nature and ever more part of me in the way that I look at myself, in the way that I look at other people. People. Now, when it comes to, let's go a little bit further. So uh, in addition, Rabbi Nachman says, he brings us this verse 
and this idea of like the, again envision you know the 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 guitarist or the cellist or you know the bass player the violinist the hand that's moving up and down the clarinetist you play the wind instrument whatever it is that the hand is moving up and down the instrument right like let's say if i'm playing the guitar i should have taken out my guitar but okay so if i'm playing the guitar right so so what i'm doing is this motion right of the hand moving up and down and also the hand that's playing plucking the strings right so i'm plucking the strings and at the same time i'm moving my other hand up and down the instrument now up and down the instrument this idea is that we, we know that the prophets used to use make use of music they had musicians who played for them in order to um, dispel the ruach necha'a in order to drive away the heaviness of spirit that's that's the antithesis of prophecy and in order to bring upon them a spirit of joy so that they could experience prophecy so we know that music was something that was a tool you know it was a tool that was utilized by the prophets and the um the the language of the pasuk in the navi is biyad nevi'im adameh hashem says god himself says i make known i make myself known uh, by by way of the hands of the prophet. And Rabbi Nachman in his lesson in 54, he says, what's the hand of the prophet? The hand of the prophet is the hand of the musician that goes up and down the instrument in order to bring forth the prophecy from the prophet. Now, what does this mean for us? Like, it's very nice to talk about prophecies and prophets, but what does it mean for us? It's like my higher self becomes accessible to me through the joy that music brings and also the the spiritual work again that that the, those points of um of the, the the pathway of choosing the good points and connecting them together to create harmonies where there might have been disharmony this is something that is essential to every one of us in order to be this process the dynamic is essential for us to be able to access the higher part of ourselves now, so, so again, it's not about whether we're musicians or not musicians, whether we enjoy music or don't enjoy music, because the dynamics of music are part of Avodah Hashem. It's part of the service of God. You know, we had a whole tribe, the tribe of Levi. So part of their function was to create music, to generate music in the Beit HaMikdash, in the, in the Holy Temple. And that was in order to create uh, an atmosphere, a highly spiritualized atmosphere, so that it was possible to do the service of God without the music, without the shira. There's no service. The divine service comes together with the music. And the Levi'im themselves, their name is Levi, is from the language of Livui, of accompaniment, right? Leah, the, the, our mother Leah, she said, after the birth of this child, this, uh, uh, the third child, her third son. So, because uh, uh, Levi is the third born. So she said, this child is going to be the one who's going to cause my husband to come and accompany me. He's going to be together with me. And he's going to be, he's going to want to attach himself to me. So we know that it's the, that Levi, who's the musician, who's the, um, who's the master of the musical instruments. And you should know that in the history of, music as a whole, you know, the place where we saw the earliest place where we have descriptions of, of complex orchestral arrangements of many, many musicians using a multiplicity of different types of instruments, meaning not only string instruments and not only percussive instruments, but all various types of instruments, right? Because we have all of our biblical instruments in the Beit HaMikdash. The first place we see it is in the temple itself. And so the Beit HaMikdash is like the, the nexus of the complexity of orchestral arrangements of this like symphonic sound, the way we think about symphonies, La Avdil. That kind of complexity of arrangement is something that goes back all the way to the beginnings of our history. But the roots of it is in Levi himself, meaning even though from the birth of Levi until the time that there was uh, a Mikdash, you're talking about a distance of hundreds of years, but Levi in his nature is already from the outset, he is made to be the accompanier, meaning the accompanist, the instrumentalist who's coming to accompany, not necessarily the voice, but the avoda, but the divine service. So this is something that applies to all of us. The place of music, the place of music of the soul, right? And, and, and you go even like to another level, if we think about it in another degree. So we have, um, I, I wanna share with you, it's a very, very, very deep idea. 
You know, it's the beginning of the teachings of the Arizal, the great Jewish mystic of 500 years ago. So he, he um, in his opening discussion, which is, you know, recorded by his student, Rav Chaim Vital, it's the beginning of a book called the Eitz Chaim. The Eitz Chaim is the tree of life. So the teachings of the great Arizal, Rav Yitzchak Luria, who lived in Sfat, I mean, in other places as well, but, but his, uh, the main work of his life was transmitted in the last two years of his life that he lived in Sfat. And, um, and during those last two years, his student Rav Chaim Vital was his, uh, you know, was his, was his right-hand man, so to speak, and, um, and took down his, his teachings. So in the opening of Eitz Chaim, we have a, a teaching, and it's called Shar Tanta. That's what it's called, Shar Tanta. And, and Tanta means the gate of Tanta. Now, Tanta is, in Hebrew, it's an acronym. And it's the letters Tet, for those who are familiar with the Hebrew letters, Tet, Nun, Taf, and Aleph. Now, what do they stand for? Well, they're kind of an inversion um, for going from above to below of the Torah itself and all of its elements. 